Thanks, everyone, for coming. Thank you, PFL, for putting on this conference. Thank you for giving me an excuse to come to Bozeman, my first time to Bozeman. Man, you people live in a beautiful part of the country. I mean, we went over to, we went over to Livingston to see PFL this morning. People are like, oh, you got to go on this drive. You got to go out into the country. I'm like, I-90 is fantastic just getting from here to there. It's wonderful. And if, you, if, if by love of bears you mean fear, then yeah, that's probably safe. The bacon part we'll get to, I promise. So thank you very much for having me. Um, I think I've got about 20 minutes or so, so I'm going to move pretty quickly. Um, I've been told to stay on the carpets because we have a lot of people on the live stream. If you're live streaming, uh, the, the coffee is amazing. Wish you were here. If you're watching this in the future, hope your choice in November is working out. Uh, we'll get there later. Um, all right, so I've got a few things to come about. We're going to talk about one of my favorite professional hobbies, which is productivity. I'm a B2B sales and marketing consultant, but I'm a big fan of productivity. I'll get into why I've done that in a minute. So uh, feel free to take notes as we walk through this. Uh, you'll obviously have a, lot, a version you can take home. You can get a copy of this deck. I've written a handful of books about sales and marketing. My latest book a couple months ago published is called Full Funnel Marketing. Um, have a couple other books. Here's why I believe I am. I'm a fairly humble guy. Uh, hopefully you would say that as well. You didn't have, but it's fine. Uh, but uh, I, I, I think I'm uniquely positioned to talk about productivity for a couple reasons. I've published my own productivity manifesto. How many of you have published a manifesto? It's a, it's a unique, it's a clarifying experience. I highly find a topic, something you love, bacon, productivity, whatever it is, think about your manifesto. The manifesto came out of a column that I wrote for a publication called GeekWire. Some of you may have heard of GeekWire. It's sort of our Northwest version of TechCrunch, kind of a tech publication. That product, that uh, the column was called Productivity Porn, which my wife coined the term of that. So I've, I've, again, like I love productivity. I love making myself more productive. I read a lot of books. I read a lot of blogs. I read a lot of newsletters. My wife calls that my productivity porn, hence the title of that series. Um, and then a couple other things we still do on our blog. Every Sunday, we publish our app of the week. And it's all kinds of different apps, but often it's something that can make you work faster, make you work smarter, take something that you do or should be doing on a regular basis, but maybe robots can help you with that. Um, and then we also have this series every Thursday called How I Work. And we ask some of the same questions of some of the top people in B2B sales and marketing What's your sleep habits? What are your productivity tips? What are some apps that you use? Uh, we've been doing it. We've got over 120 of these on the blog now, and I learn something every week. So happy to get a copy of those to anyone that's interested. So uh, I'm assuming that most people in the room get everything done on their to-do list. You've got a clean inbox zero on a regular basis. You never deal with fire drills. Your calendar is free to do with whatever you want. Does that sound familiar to everybody? Yeah. Yeah, never happens, right? I mean, we'll get into email management in a, in a minute, but whoever came up with the term inbox zero, I think was trying to torture us. There's no such thing as inbox zero. It's kind of like gardening. You're never done gardening. Like some, the weeds are going to pop up tomorrow after you're done weeding. So the idea that you've got to focus on the right things, the idea that if you go back to Stephen Covey's habits, that you're not just focused on the urgent, you're focused on the important. Well, that all sounds fine and good until you go back to your desk and you've got 100 emails and you've got four meetings you're supposed to be in and your kids want you to pick them up in, oh, wait, 15 minutes. Like, how do you actually get everything done? Like, very rarely do I actually find literature and sort of these nice big strategic books like Covey and others that give you a real blueprint, not just strategic ideas, but a real idea of what to, how to get things done. So I'm going to cover some of those today. A lot of this is based on this book. If you read one book on productivity, I recommend Getting Things Done by David Allen. This is a fundamental book that a lot of what I'm going to talk about today is based on. I'm going to walk through a number of habits that are things that I try to follow, things that I've tried to, I've observed. So as my professional hobby, I, we ask a lot of people what makes you productive. The habits I'm going to walk through and the categories and the tactics are specifically things that we see working in the wild, that we see working among some of the most productive people that we see, our clients, our partners, people that we don't work with but want to, people we just see just have a million things to do but tend to get the right things done. Um, and I did, like I said, I try to do this myself as well. I'm not just the president of the Hair Club for Men, I'm also a client. <laughs> That's good. So sometimes we have a very polite crowd that doesn't give me the laugh that makes the joke better. So, so thank you for that. Um, all right, so here's my seven habits, and we're going to walk through each of these, um, but this is the, I mean, you know, you could have as many of these as you want. Today, over the next, uh, well, I got 16 minutes left, the next 16 minutes are going to be a little like a half-hour golf swing where I give you like 47 things that you should probably change. Now, do not go try to implement all 47 changes in your next round of golf. Take good notes, find the things that you like, pick one or two of these, though, that it's Thursday. By tomorrow, end of day, what's one or two things in this, in the next 15, 16 minutes that you will start to implement for yourself, right? 
Think about which of these categories. There should be something on here that speaks to you. There's probably every one of these, there's probably things you wish were better. One of these makes you sweat more. One of these makes you a little more anxious, whether it's your calendar or your email or the idea that you always have great ideas in the shower and there's something about that shower door that erases them as soon as you walk to the other side of that shower door. We're actually going to talk about that today as well. Um, so with further ado, I'm going to get right into it. So first, project list. This is going to come... This is going to, I love memes, big meme fan. Uh, this is going to come straight out of the getting things done system. I'm a huge fan of David Allen's system of creating projects. I would encourage you, if you feel, don't have a productivity system today, first thing you do is just do a brain dump. Don't do it right now. Don't do it today. But at some point when you can give yourself at least 30, 40 minutes, close your door, turn off your alerts, put, get out a blank piece of paper, and just start writing everything down. Some of them will be things like, I got to pick up dog food on the way home. Some of them will be longer-term projects that you've always wanted to get done. Clean the garage, build a garage, whatever it is, write them all down. The difference between a task and a project, a task you can do in one step. If it takes more than one step to get something done, that is a project. I would encourage you to maintain a list of projects. The best practice I've seen work is people have one list. Not a home list, not a professional list, one list. It has everything from build your 2017 plan, Clean the garage, plan the vacation, whatever those things are, have one list. I tend to find on a consistent basis, most people's lists are between 80 and 120 things. If you want to separate a list between those things that are sort of long-term goals and those things that are 6 to 12-month goals, I'd encourage you to do that. Your active project list should be shorter-term 6 to 12-month things. And then the review process for that is once a week. You can do it on a Friday afternoon. You could do it on a Monday morning. I like Sunday night. Put the kids down, pour a little scotchy scotch, Print out the list. I keep it all on Outlook. I've got tags that say something's a project. I print those out. Everything on that list should theoretically have a next step, right? You might not have the next step this week. You might look at something and say, yes, that is a six-month priority, but no, that's not getting done this week. So when you move on. You know that's going to be there next week. Today, if there's a project you come up with, if you have a project idea that you come up with today, but it's not something that really is going to get done between now and Sunday, if it really has no chance of getting done but something you want to think about, put it on your project list and forget about it. A lot of these systems, whether it's working on your project list or getting the right things done or idea capture, is about what David Allen calls mind like water. The more time you're trying to remember things, the less time you're being creative. If you think you need to get dog food on the way home today, so to remember that, you're probably in your head going, get dog food, get dog food, get dog food, get We're trying to remember that, right? What is your trusted system that whenever you head home, you stop at Petco? Is it a Post-it? Is it something on your calendar? Your system may be different, right? You may be a big Outlook fan. You may be a big Evernote fan. You may be a bigger, big Post-it note fan. It doesn't matter. Whatever your system is, as long as you use it consistently, can capture these things for you. Having that project list is important. Having a regular cadence of reviewing that project list is important. Task management. What I like to do is what I like to do is category task, categorize tasks in a couple ways. One, I categorize tasks based on um, context. There are things I can only do at home. There's things I can only do in my office. There's things I can only do when I'm on a computer with and without internet. So a big part of categorizing your task is not having to look at things that you can't actually get done right now. So focus on the things that you can actually get done in this moment at this time. Think about the things on your task list, right? You got to think about what you have time for, what you have the ability to do, and sometimes what you have the energy to get done. I will tell you that typically, boy, this actually aligns right now, typically between 1.30 and 2.30 in the afternoon, I am super unproductive. Whether or not I have a really good sandwich, and I have a great story if you want to hear later about that, um, but you know, usually the early afternoon, like I just am not very productive, so I can't work on like a big meaty project. So I tend to give myself other things that just are not that difficult to get done during that time. I know when my energy is going to be. I try to get my most important stuff done first thing in the morning. If you know what your five things are to do today, how many of you have like a list of five things like on a, or X number of things every day you need to get done? How many of you are disciplined enough to do, enumerate the number one of five? What is the one most important thing you need to do every day? I won't ask for a show of hands of how many of you consistently get that one of five things done because most of us don't. Right? That number one on your list is more important than two through five combined, typically. And yet that number one is there because it's important, but also because it's hard, because it, you feel like it's time-consuming, it's intimidating. Right? It's going to take more work. Just carve out time in the morning. Try to block time in the morning to focus on that one of five. 
If all you do is get that one of five done every day, you'll be phenomenally more successful. All right, I'm going to keep moving quickly. Email management. Again, inbox zero, myth doesn't happen. You're always going to get more email. 90% of your email is someone else's priorities. If you know what your projects are, if you know what your objectives are, your, your objectives are how you get paid, it's how you enjoy life. Your projects kind of out of those priorities. Your tasks support those projects. What percent of your emails related to your tasks or your projects or your objectives? Small percentage, right? So you got to be disciplined about where you spend your time. One of the best tips I can give you on email is to work in offline mode. Now, there are some jobs where getting regular flow of email is important. If you're in customer service, clearly if you're in PFL's customer service, you're replying to email in lightning fast time, so they can't do this. But for most of us, you don't need to respond to an email in 15 minutes. You don't have to respond to it in 24 hours. Depending on your role, you might think about the 24-hour rule. Someone sends you an email and other people are copied, or it's sent to someone else and you are copied. Ignore it for 24 hours. Most of the time, it'll get resolved on its own, and they won't come back to you asking for your help again, right? But if you work in offline mode, and you can do this in Outlook, you can do this in Gmail, all of a sudden you don't have new emails coming in that are distracting you, right? I, get in, I don't have time to get into the science of distraction and being able to focus. But if you can turn your email off and eliminate distractions and focus specifically on the emails that tie to your tasks for today and the projects you care about, the rest of them can wait for later. David Allen talks about having some folders, right? One folder is at action. And he puts a little at symbol because when you do the favorites, it'll show up at the top of your list. At action are things that don't have to get done now, but you should get to at some point. That's my favorite airport project, right? If I'm sitting in the airport waiting for a flight to leave, I power through at action. I can do those in small amounts of time when it's not, in, when I've, we're maybe between 1.30 and 3.30 when it's not as important. I've got an at reading folder. My newsletters have an automatic rule for all my newsletters go into that folder. I don't want to think about them. I don't want to look at them when I need to be focused on what I need to be doing right now. I have an at waiting for folder so that every time I send an email that I want to follow up on, I blind copy myself and have a rule that whenever I'm blind copy, it goes into the at waiting for folder. I don't have to treat my inbox as a to-do list hoping they're going to follow up. Once or twice a week, I can go into my at waiting for folder and delete the stuff that's been followed up and follow up with the people that haven't followed up with me yet. So a few things to help with email, but the most important one, I think, is focus on what's important, most important. Focus on the 10% that are your priorities and work in offline mode so you can stay focused on what you do need to get done in email and get out and get back to work on the most important things. I love, this is, this feel bad, I love these great leather notepads that PFL has given us, and I'm very excited to use it, but... I don't like using these on a daily basis. Because if you take notes on something and then it's like 18 pages back or it's on a notebook two notebooks ago, what's how are you going to actually capture that? The best practice I've seen from a note-taking standpoint is to use, first of all, use pen and paper. There's nothing worse than sitting in a meeting and you're on your computer taking notes in your Evernote, but people think you're on your email and not paying attention. There's plenty of science that says if you're actually using pen and paper, even if your penmanship is bad, you can come look at mine. Mine's terrible. My first grade teacher is a fortune teller. She told my parents that I was going to have terrible pan writing. I was hugely, uh, I was very frustrated by that, but she was right. But when you handwrite something, even if you can't read it 10 minutes later, you recall it better. The physical act of writing something down means you are more likely to retain it, more likely to keep it in your, in your head. And what, I, what I've seen best practice is you use a pad and paper, something where you can tear the paper off. You take notes, put the date, put the topic at the top. Take your notes and put little boxes for the to-dos. After that meeting, not immediately after, maybe you keep track of them and you do it once a day, you process those tasks. Anything that had a box, you put it in your task list, you put it in your project list, you can immediately get it done. David Allen talks about the two-minute rule. If you can do something in two minutes or less, do it right now. Don't delay it. Don't do it somewhere else. If you're in your inbox and you see something that follows the two-minute rule and you can't get it done right now, you probably shouldn't have checked your email in the first place because you didn't have time. Right? So take those notes, put, process everything with a little box into your system, and then scan that note. Put it into a digital format. Have files, you can do it in Box, you can do it in Dropbox, whatever you use. Scan that with one of those Fujitsu scan snap tools. Now you have access to all your notes in real time whenever you want, because you've filed them based on project, based on client, based on initiative, based on however you want to do it. The system I usually use is I've got folders based on different projects we do, folders based on clients, and my, filing, my, my file naming system is year, dot month, dot date, and then topic, so I can easily go through and sort of like do the chronological order and find what I'm looking for. It's not perfect, 
but it gets the job done and it makes a lot of those notes far more accessible into the future. And I'm much more likely to actually use those notes. If you're interested, I actually ha can show you the notebooks. We, so we used to, this is how big of a productivity geek I am. We used to actually just use like no notepads you got at Staple. I had my own notepads made for the date, for the topic, for a to-do list. I'm a, marketing I'm a B2B marketing consultant, so we have a sales funnel printed on every single piece of paper. Um, I have copies, and if anyone wants one, I'll send you one afterward as well. Um, but I found that that's hugely helpful for me. Time management. The biggest thing here for the in the interest of time is to be intentional. Be intentional about where you're spending your time. I realize that it's easier for me as a business owner to say, well, if you're not in needed in a meeting, don't go to it and beg out of it. But what's the opportunity cost of going? If you're regularly in a meeting where you don't participate or you don't talk, do you really need to be there? If someone in your organization is producing a meeting where there is no agenda, where it's meandering, where there's no follow-up or action items afterward, what are you doing? If meetings by default get set as an hour with no agenda, with no topic, what are you doing? Meetings are by far the biggest time waster you have. I hear way too many people saying, boy, I wish I had more work to do, work to, time to, to get work done during the day. I'm in meetings all day. I can't get my job done. What? Like, what, what is your one of five? What's your two of five, three of five? Why aren't you getting those done? What is so important you need to be in a meeting instead of getting that thing done today? Right? We all have plenty of time. A good friend of mine has a mug that says, I have the same hours in the day as Beyonce. If she can do it, you can do it. You know, there are clearly, look, there's meetings that you can't get out of. There's meetings that you may not be able to say no to. But I guarantee you, if you look at the next seven to ten days of your calendar, there's plenty of meetings you can cancel, plenty of meetings you can say I'm not going to. There's plenty of times you can say, hey, listen, I'd love to attend that. I've got to get this done. Right? Start forcing the conversations in your organization, or at least in your department, or at least with your manager, of where you need to best spend your time. Idea capture. This is one of my favorites. I got a friend of mine who has a goal of writing down at least 10 ideas every day. And he knows that most of those ideas are going to be crappy. But, and he does it on weekends too. But he says, if I write down 10 ideas a day, and if I get 3,600 ideas a year, and if 1% of those ideas are spectacular, I have 36 spectacular ideas every year. It's a lot. Think about it. That's a lot, right? So what are you doing to regularly capture your ideas? So there's a number of ways to do this, right? For me, always have a pad and paper with you. There's a couple things we're about to talk about that some people get a little nervous about. I put this at the end of the presentation just in case I freak people out. I'm not going to be here that much longer. So first of all, I always carry a moleskin. I'm mo most of the time I'm wearing a sport coat, I carry a moleskin, and I have a pen with me at all times. If I don't have these, I have a, cop a version of this moleskin that's about a quarter of this size, and I should have brought it with me. I have this pen that's about this big, and if you pull it out, it extends, the, the, the pen part comes out. So I can put it in my jeans pocket. Just have it with me all the time. Being able to write something down gets it out of your head. I'll talk about in a system, second my system for making sure I'm always checking this to take those ideas down. Always be able to capture the idea. Mind like water. Whatever that idea is, you don't want to keep thinking about it so you remember it. So what about the times when you can't carry a notebook around? Some of the best ideas you're going to come up with are when you're in the shower, when you're working out, or when you're driving. And there's science behind this. Like you're literally, when you're, and during those three activities, you typically are not doing something else. You are not working on some other project or you're not in the midst of helping your kids with your homework. You're not intentionally doing something else. So you allow your mind to wander. I used to think this was woo-woo. I'm not a big woo-woo guy. But I like used to think it was woo-woo that the whole subconscious would think for you. Whatever idea, whatever program, whatever brainstorm you need to work on, think about that right before you go to bed. Your subconscious will help you think about it overnight. That's why you come up with ideas in the shower and on a run, <laughs> and, and in the car. So here's how you solve for that. If you're in the shower, go buy a product called Aquanotes. They are, it's rub, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not making this up, it's rubber paper that like has a little suction cup, goes on the side of your, uh, side of your, your, your shower. A number two pencil will write perfectly on these little rubberized paper. I don't think you can recycle them. I have no idea what they're made of. Like they're probably terrible for the environment. Sorry, Montana. But, like, but they're awesome because now you can finally capture those ideas in the shower. It's, it's awesome. My wife made fun of me until she started using them as well. Um, if you're driving or if you're out for a run, there's a product called Dial to Do. D-I-A-L, the number two, D-O. It's on your phone. It's an app. It costs all like $2.99, like $2.99 a month. What you do is you call the number and it says, what do you want to do? And you say a reminder and it, it takes a message. Just like you're leaving yourself a message. It will translate that message into text and it will email you that message in text format. 
Fairly simple, right? But the next time you get to your email, like if you're driving and then you go check your email, I guarantee you, you will have forgotten about most of what the old ideas you left you, right? A lot of, I mean, we, talk, we were talking about this earlier today and a little bit last night. Like you think about the people that are the most successful, most innovative people in the world. Like they didn't have one idea that all of a sudden worked. They were thinking about ideas all the time. Like Jim Henson is one of the most brilliant creative professionals in the last 100 years, the creator of the Muppets. Like it's, it's well known that for every one great idea he had, there were dozens left in his notebook that never saw the, 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 the time of day. Constant idea capture is key to uncovering the innovation in your own head. And finally, automation and reminder tools. I, I'm, out, I'm so far out of time. I'm actually not that far out of time, but they've stopped the, they've stopped the timer entirely. So I'm almost done. This is my last one. Make it so that you don't have to remember to do these things. A lot of the things you will want to do, like things you will, like, let's say you want to make sure that you're saying happy birthday to everybody. Well, Facebook or LinkedIn will send you an alert every morning telling you those things, right? My favorite uh, uh, hack on this one is to schedule yourself a meeting every day. Uh, you don't have to do it as a meeting, but at least print it out. It's called your daily do. Every day at 7.30 in my calendar, I have my daily do list. It is a reminder of all the things that I should be doing every day. Some of them are networking related, some of them are lead follow-up related. Some of them are family related. And I've been using this now for years, but I guarantee you there's things I, sh I do every day that I still need that list for. I don't want to spend brain power remembering those things. I've got a trusted system. I've got this list that will remind me to do it. Now, do I follow that entire list every day, seven days a week? No. Am I more consistent about doing the things that I want to be doing on a regular basis? Yes, absolutely. Right. Perfect is the enemy of good. This isn't about doing all of these things. Please don't follow everything that we just followed starting tomorrow when you change your golf swing. But hopefully you've seen some things in this list so far uh, or in this, in this discussion uh, that can help you think, try to be a little more productive, capture more ideas, uh, and feel a little more organized. So don't forget, you've got the Productivity Manifesto, the Productivity Porn, Sales and Marketing Books. Um, uh, if you want any of these, please bring me a card, send me an email. If you'd like a copy of that uh, 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 notepad, you can uh, let me know that as well. I don't have any here, but I'm happy to send you one. And uh, thanks very much. Thanks for having me.